Greetings and welcome back to Board Game Science. I am your host, Dr. Ransom Poitras, and this week I'm excited to be spotlighting the game Compounded, designed by Daryl Lauder and published by uh, Dice Hate Me Games in 2013 after a successful Kickstarter launch. And the game is designed for about anywhere from two to five players but with a gameplay time of anywhere between 30 minutes and uh, an hour and a half, 90 minutes. So interestingly enough, this game, which has a lot of science in it, started off as a game like a mad scientist alchemy game where you combine things like rat's tails and pieces of hair or whatever to make these crazy elements. But it was Daryl Lauder's wife, Leslie, who's a high school teacher who suggested that he use real science, real periodic table, real elements, real compounds uh, to basically make the game more compelling. The real science kind of drawing the hook for the, the gameplay. And so that's kind of how this kind of science part of it developed around this game. Fortunately, you don't need to actually know any of the science to play the game. So let's take a brief moment and I'll explain how the game is played and then we'll talk a little bit about the science. So in the game compounded, each person acts as a lab manager, trying to construct and score chemical compounds before others do. The game takes place in a series of rounds, with each round consisting of four phases, helpfully shown on each player's workbench. In the first phase, called the discovery phase, you draw random elements from the element bag and place them on your workbench. In the study phase, you then place claim tokens on compounds you want to reserve and collect for yourself. Then in the research phase, you place elements from your workbench onto unfinished compounds in the research field. In the final lab phase, you score completed and claimed compounds and move your score token along the track and you also raise experiment levels. So what do I mean by raise experiment levels? Your experiment level for each phase dictates how much of an action you can take. So for example, in the discovery phase, you can initially only draw two elements out of the bag, but completing compounds with a blue discovery symbol allows you to increase your level here and then draw three elements in future rounds. Leveling up the study phase allows you to claim more compounds. Leveling up the research phase allows you to place more elements. And finally, leveling up the lab phase allows you to store more elements on your workbench. Then, when all the phases are complete, the research field is repopulated with new compounds. The starting player token gets passed to the left, and then the next round begins. There is one additional complication. Occasionally, while repopulating the research field, a lab fire card is revealed. In this case, flame tokens are added to any element that's flammable. Any compounds that reach their flame limit explode, and the elements are scattered to adjacent compounds. The game ends and points are tallied when a player reaches 50 points or completes three out of their four experiments on their workbench. There are some additional complexities, including acquiring certain items that can provide benefits along the way, as well as some chemical reactions that can occur when compounds are completed. The individual details for these are described on the player board here and in the manual, but I won't go into them just now. This is a good enough sample of kind of how the game is run. So now that you understand a little bit about the gameplay, how close does the actual science come to the real thing? So unlike some of the other games we've spotlighted thus far, Daryl Lauder actually consulted chemists to make sure that he got as much of the science correct as possible. So to that end, the bonds are correct, the ionic structures are correct, the relative flammabilities are correct. So a lot of the actual science parts of this are correct. He's thrown in a bunch of real scientific tools. Some of the lab tools like graduated cylinders and pipettes and Bunsen burners are real things that we commonly use in the lab. One of the other things that's really neat about this 
is that he's used official chemistry CPK coloring in his, uh, his elements here. So what do I mean by that? So in this model here of methanol, you can see that there's a, a bunch of different colors on this model. There's white, there's black, and there's red. So how do we know anything about this model and what molecule this is? So the colors have been standardized in the chemistry community so that just by looking at the color, you can immediately tell uh, what kind of atom this is. So white being hydrogen, black carbon, and red oxygen. So he's used that same official coloring in his cubes. So in this case, black is carbon and white is hydrogen and so on and so forth. So that's a really cool little nod. There's a couple of other things here that are also kind of accurate. He's got a real periodic table, and real chemical compounds. So the technical science is pretty good. The gameplay though is not really connected at all with real science. So any lab that has this many lab fires in it is going to have some serious issues <laughs> and come under major investigations and probably be shut down. Any lab that has a single fire is in <laughs> big trouble probably. And with as many fires as happened in this game, it's just totally unrealistic. Also, uh, combining and creating compounds is not nearly as easy as this game makes it out to be. It's a very technical process, very delicate, and your, your yields, that is the percentage of the, the compound that you're trying to get are usually pretty low in organic synthesis, as our organic chemistry students will tell you. So although the science is correct, the gameplay isn't necessarily. But it still makes for a really fun game, and it's, there are, it's fun that there are these little kind of extra things that are real and connect to kind of the way scientists really do their work. So I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed playing this game as well, and I look forward to sharing the next game with you.